55 years ago, when Walter Ehlers crossed this beach, it was anything but a quiet stroll. Ehlers was a staff sergeant when he and his brother hit the Normandy beaches on D-Day. Both had fought side by side in North Africa and Sicily, but the army decided to split them up for the massive European invasion. His brother never made it off the beach. It was in July when they finally came and notified me that he was killed actually on D-Day when his ship landed. And uh, he and his whole squad were uh, wiped out on in one blow that uh, they said, some people said it was an 88, some people said it was mortars. They don't know what it was, really. Ehlers and his older brother joined the army in their home state of Kansas in 1940. Walter was too young to enlist, but his mother tearfully agreed to sign for him if he would pledge to be a Christian soldier. When I was in the service, there's so many uh, times when you are tempted to do things you know you shouldn't do. Uh, I could still see my mother's tears and I didn't want to dishonor her and above all, I didn't want to dishonor God. Ehlers had no idea when he left his family's farm that he was destined to become one of the war's most honored heroes. When he learned he was to be decorated, Ehlers said he was just doing his job. But the Congressional Medal of Honor he received is the highest military decoration conferred by our nation for deeds of extraordinary courage and bravery, at risk of life, above and beyond the call of duty. There are living Medal of Honor recipients from three past wars, Vietnam, Korea, and World War II. If you ask any of them, they'll likely echo Ehlers' words and say they were just doing their jobs. And some will also quickly acknowledge that God was with them during their experiences. I have no excuse for being here. There's no excuse in the world. If it hadn't been that the Lord, as I say, was saving me for later duty. For me in combat, my faith was a substitute for, for fear. It gave me confidence to do things that for me would have otherwise been impossible. Prior to combat, I was practicing to be a Christian. And uh, in, in combat is when I became a practicing Christian. But I thought if I could just save one more man, it'd be worth getting wounded over. So I just kept praying, Lord, please help me get one more. And he did until I got all my men off. And I reached out and just said, God, I need you. I knew that he knew me and I knew that he was there. You know, I knew I had mother back uh, praying, and I knew I had my daddy praying, and I knew everybody at Second Presbyterian Church in Chattanooga was praying. I found uh, prayer to be one thing that uh, sustained me all through the war. My prayer wasn't that God made me a great hero or that I became a, a John Wayne and Nightly enemy. It was that I would have the courage uh, to get out of that hole and do what was right, and that uh, I died like a man. I told my troops, I said, all I want you to do, fellas, is have your machine guns ready. Pray, 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 and don't give up. 